non leaves until we've got the details and they've been searched. You're coming with us. Mr. Munro! What an unexpected pleasure. We have a warrant to search the premises. Well, if you let me know what you're looking for, I might be able to help you. We have received information that drugs are being sold on these premises. That's right. Yeah, they're in a machine by the bar, in packs of 20s. We sell all the major brands. Would you uh, care for a cup of coffee? Check everything. Sir? Freshly ground. Plus, oh, ammo nitro. They use it for. Yeah, uh, I know what they use it for. Thank it's you. not illegal. No. But these are. Personally. Yeah, sure. Might as well as well as well. Mm. Leave it alone. Um, for all those in the community, you might regard this as harassment. Not me, you understand. I know you're just doing your job. What are these? Blood pressure tablets. But this isn't the first time my club has been targeted. There's nothing here, sir. If I was prone to paranoia... You know the procedure if you want to make a complaint. I wouldn't do that to you, Mr Munro. We're old friends. We go back a long way. You can't do this to me. I've got work in the morning. What a waste of time. Some letters. I found them. Yeah, I've heard it all before, mate. All right, someone give me some help. Who? I don't know who. You see, that's your problem, Jordan. Too little, too late, mate. Can you guess? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the problem is, really. Well? Ah, wishful we thinking, sir. Whoever it was who gave the tip off is either pulling a fast one or Mickey Owen saw us coming. Yeah, you've had time to put the coffee on. Have you heard of the Pink Pound? Not another one of Mickey Owen's clubs, is it? It's an economic force. I know, sir. I was being facetious. Uh, the spending power of the gay community. But it's not just the Pink Pound. It's also the Pink Vote. Which is why I've had Tracy Bolter on the phone all morning, Councillor Bolter. She's making accusations of police harassment against the gay community. News. That's where she was brought into. She? Roxanne. Oh, a nice for Roxy. I'm following up a domestic. Oh, yeah. It's not like that. I know. Well, I knew the victim. Is she a looker? We'll see. How well do you know her? Friend of a friend. Missed opportunity. You must be joking. Smithy was on late last week. He gets called to a domestic at the Riverside Apartments. Very posh. When he arrived, he found Roxanne on the floor, clutching her stomach. She'd been given a good kicking by her boyfriend. When I heard the name Roxanne, it clicked. She's got a good reason she didn't want to prosecute. Her fellow's Mickey Owen. I thought he was a sheriff. Oh, he is. Morning. Hi. Can we go in there? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Can we come in? Is that a question or a request? If it's a question, then yeah, you just put one foot in front of the other. If it's a request, then no. I've already made my statement. That's not why we're here. And no, you don't tell. We have a mutual friend. Do we? It's been a long time. I just wondered if you were still in touch. My memory isn't what it used to be. Well, let me jog it for you. A couple of nights ago, we had a tip-off about drugs being sold at the Pink Cocker 2. When we raided the place, we only made two arrests for possession. And they weren't talking. 
Then you think it was me? No, I think it was him, our mutual friend. Hang on a minute, Jim. Who are we talking about here? My old DS. Ted Roach. Thanks, Jane. There's no reason to doubt the information we've been given. Even though the tip-off was made anonymously. It tied in with our own intelligence. You jumped the gun! What was I supposed to do? Homophobia is the new racism, Andrew. We have to tread very lightly indeed. In pink tights and tutus, if we have to. Mickey Owen's been a thorn in our side for years. He's got some very powerful friends, Andrew. If he falls, it's got to be because he's jumped, not been pushed. Where is he, Roxanne? Ted. I haven't seen him in years. He didn't have many friends in the police force. Well, you didn't have many friends, full stop. I was one of the chosen few. Well, maybe I should be asking you where he is. What happened to him? He resigned before he was fired. He, <laughs> he was a good copper. It was a waste. The last I heard, he was in the private sector. Dishing the dirt on amorous housewives and bandy-legged bank managers. He always had a soft spot for Roxanne. Yeah, between his ears. She was on the payroll. Hey, I didn't make a habit of it. You won't finger Mickey, so he did it for you. Oh, have you been reading my diaries? I saw him. Blue cotton. Is that a new aftershave? You know where he is, Roxanne. Yes, and you know where you can go. If it's a nice room, you must have good health insurance. They put me in here because they couldn't decide whether to put me in a male or female bay. The story of my life. It's a result. Is that a Birkenhead brogue I detect? Kirby. Oof. Get you. Flowers from Mickey. Guilty conscience. Don't read anything into it. He kicked you so hard, he almost ruptured your bladder. Well, some might say I deserved it. No one deserves that. Yeah, at first I thought it was one of these squeaky toys, you know, made out of rubber. She found it over there. But it wasn't. No. It's around there somewhere. Sure it's not from a tailor's dummy or something? No, it looked really enough to me. Tony, I think I found it. Looks a bit, uh, cute. Can you get the dog back, please, Mr. Jones? Yeah. What's that sticking out the top? Very nice. Sarah Oscar from 595. Do we know of anyone missing a foot? That's it. The car you see? A grey car in the state. Okay, Do you want to win the grand state? Not yet. Why is it so important to find this guy? I learned a lot from him. Some things are worth learning, some things weren't. Yeah, but you can say that about anyone. He was a loose cannon. A maverick. He rewrote the book. He broke the mould. He came from the unside of conventional. Even Burnside thought he was a dinosaur. <laughs> that ain't something. Well. Ted could drink anyone under the table. And at the time, it impressed me. It was more proof he had the right stuff. Is that him? That's him. But he was selfish, unreliable, a womanizer, and on top of that, he had a temper. Above all, he was a friend. And I think it was him that tipped us off about home. He's not going to drive, is he? But it looks like it. You can't let him drive like that, he might kill somebody. We'll follow him till he makes a mistake and then pull him. Why? Never reach. So is this where your dog found the foot? Yeah, right there. Doesn't make a habit, this sort of thing, does he? What have we got? I think I'd better call my boss. When do we pull him over? When he does something. He's doing something now, driving under the influence. <laughs> so 
Sarah Oscar from 600, receiving over. Any idea why I pulled you over, sir? Well, the sun was in my eyes, officer. But you did see the zebra crossing. A zebra? I must be. If you'd like to step out of the car, please, sir. And Mr. Edward John Roach. Yeah, I used to be in the job, you know. You still didn't stop at a pedestrian crossing? Sun Hill, in fact. Have you been drinking? Not that I'd expect that to count for anything these days. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure about that, Ted. Jim! It is you, isn't it? Well, I've put on a little weight. You've put on a uniform. Don't tell me. Tenure? Yeah. Fancy seeing you in a square suit. It's all right now, I'm sorted. So how you doing? I'm doing, you know, ducking and diving, in and across. We should have a bevy sometime. I taught him everything he knows. When I first met him, he was wet behind um, the ears. Ted, have you been making any calls on you? What do you mean, calls? Oh, you know the type. You know, the ones that will get you a community action trust report. Who, me? No. Because it was you I saw the pink cockatoo last night, wasn't it? The pink what? Mickey Owens joint. Do you mind? And it was you who called us. You know how things are between me and Mickey Owen. We've been to see Roxanne. Oh, I see. I see what's happening. Leverage. How long you've been following me, waiting for me to trip up? <laughs> well, you give a little to get a little, Ted. You taught me that. I'm not that desperate to avoid three points on my license. But you know what's going on over there. Hi, Ted. Nice to bump into you. Long time no see. Where have you been? What you been doing? Yeah, well, I know what you've been doing. Look, you made that call to us because Mickey bashed Roxanne up. Now, you knew she wouldn't grass on him. But then, there's no love loss between you and Mickey, is there? Nor me and the Met. I want to know what you know. Mickey always lives on the edge. It's only a matter of time before he trips and falls. Did you make that call? All you had to do was ask, Jim. And not like this. There are rules, codes, you know that. In or out of the uniform, in or out of the job. We're on the same side. But you don't stitch up your mates. I've used one of these before, sir. Oh, Jim. Dog dug it up over there chewed it a bit and eventually dropped it over there, which is where we found it, once Mr. Jones pointed the area out to us. Right. So, this will be in all the papers, I suppose? Yeah, probably. Make me famous, will it? No. A dog will be. Fair enough. Good girl. Did you take a statement then, Duncan? Yeah, it's all sorted. And what are the essays, sir? Well, the initial thoughts of the foot belong to a middle-aged man, judging by the size and shape. It's been buried for about seven or eight years. Fragments of the bone show signs have been tackled by a hacksaw blade or something similar. Something jagged, not clean like you'd get in a, an accident. What about surgery? Could it be an amputated limb from the hospital? No chance since we found the hand. What other conditions are there? Well, not as preserved as the foot, forgive the pun. You're going to run with this, Gov? Well, until I might hear interesting. Have you got something to shut Pavarotti up, I hope? Drink, dry, Sarge. This time of day. Tell me I'm dreaming. Your worst nightmare. I thought you were dead. No, just living in Essex. At least I was. Chucked you out, did they? Come on, you know the drill. Passing through. Trying to. Address. 12A Antrim Passage. That's by the massage parlour, isn't it? Thought you'd know it. Public transport from now on then, Ted. I need my car for work. What kind of work's that? Private investigator. What? Like Magnum, you mean? Well, at least you got the Tash. All right, you've had your fun. And you've had one too many. I need my license. Whoever heard of a PI having to get a bus? You can always tell us what you know about Mickey Owen, Ted. 
And if you guys did your jobs properly, you wouldn't need me to tell you anything. You've been in trouble with the law before, Edward? Only when I work with kids like you. Sarge, can I have a word? I need to confer with Mr. Monroe before we... You trying to delay the test? No, Sarge. We shouldn't have nicked him if you didn't want him stuck on. Five minutes. You're the arresting officer. I need you here. I need to talk to Mr. Monroe, Sarge. No. Sarge. What's he playing at? Stick him in the cell so I sort this nuts around. What is this? Special treatment? Is that the way we used to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fake Nancy. Sort him out. Now I know why I left. Half hour, Max. Shut it! I mean, what kind of sicko could somebody speak up anyway? Who's Mr. Coffee? Oh, yeah. That sounds like a man for you, John. That's Ansridge. Good feet. No way to run, no way to hide. Paul, got yours, go. Have you heard? I found more body parts, have they? Jim's brought in Ted Roach. The Ted Roach? What do you mean, brought him in? Come on, Paul, I'm only asking. He's brought him in on a drink drive. Oh. Well, that must be him. Who? A DS that used to work here. Be interested if Mum Rowe catches up with him. Why is that then? Well, let's just say they weren't exactly best of buddies. He tried to rearrange Mum Rowe's face furniture with his fists. I don't think it's anything to joke about. Come on, he was a character, that's all. It was insubordinate. He always kept a bottle of scotch in his drawer and a packet of three in his wallet. Old school. I don't think get characters like that anymore. That sounds like a right prat to me. Yeah, but you command the respect from the villains that he nicked. And that's more to say to the babes that they're kicking out of Indon these days. Half of them need help crossing the road. And Jim's nicked him? Yeah. But they were best mates. Yeah. Not the only person to have been let down in this world, is he? Ted Roach was the person who tipped us off. In revenge for Mickey Owen beating Roxanne up. But we didn't find anything. He knows more. How can you be so sure? Or maybe the whole thing was one big joke at my expense. Waste police time and wind a poem. Well, why don't we see what he's got to say? Can we see him, Matt? Is that advisable, sir? Probably not. Well, Andrew, seems as though you finally got me where you want me. Any luck? What do you think? What are you looking for? A man aged 35 to 40 at time of disappearance. <laughs> well, that should scale it down a couple of million, shouldn't it? I've got a possible for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Steve Bullen. We're now in 95, a bit outside your time frame, but I don't know if it's a profile. How do you know? He's got a club number and very dodgy associations. He's not the only one. I'll make a note of that. Cheers, Mickey. You're welcome. Jim seems to think you have some information on Mickey Owen. Jim's wrong. Ted, if you make a statement, it will take time. It will give your body a chance to filter the alcohol. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. You don't have to pretend. I'm not making a statement. There's nothing I have to say. I'll take cabs. I'd prefer to lose my license rather than help put a feather in your cap. Matt, Ted, don't be so stupid. If I had anything to say, do you think I'd say it to him? You can take him to the alcohol room now. On your feet, Ted. Mr. Roach to you. Countrywide, Mispers, who fit the bill across that time period, number 109. Very precise. Well, I tried to concentrate on those in around the immediate area. How many? Six. Well, that's more manageable. Well, two of them can be ruled out straight away because of ethnic origin. Yeah. We're allowed to do that these days. So that leaves four. Zeke Barrow. Yeah, schizophrenic, believed to be drowned. Never found his body. There were two witnesses that saw him jump into the Thames. Well, he can't do that without feet, can he? <laughs> Which leaves us the three definite possibilities. 
Well, do I pass? The first reading was 38. The second was 34. You just notched onto the legal limit. You look disappointed, Matt. Not really. Now you're back in town, we're bound to see more of you. So, once we've ruled out amputees, artists, and any other weirdos or wackos, this is what we're left with. Philip Mercy. Now, he's aged 37, single, no fixed abode. Any form? He's been done for petty theft and he's got three counts of indecency. And we've got John Rhodes. He's aged 35, married, and he's known to have numerous gambling debts. Should have fallen out with loan sharks. <laughs> and Steve Buller. Now, he's aged 34. ABH, GBH, 10 years stretch for armed robbery, obvious criminal connections, but he disappeared in February 1995. Yeah, I know it's outside the time remit, but Mickey thought he was worth a punt. I know his sister. We'll take him, then. At least you'd have a two, Dunk. Good work, Duncan. Bridge, please, ma'am. I'm sorry, love. You go on my way. I was waiting for a lady. Do you see a lady? You're not expecting a tip. You couldn't afford me. <laughs> Don't you believe it. Andrew, I heard you had a visitor yesterday. Ted Roach? Yeah, word is he tips you off about the pink cockatoo. Jim seemed to think he knew something. If he did, he wasn't telling me. In the meantime, I've Councillor Bolter's complaint to deal with. Yeah, well, maybe I'll pay Mickey Eye in a visit. I thought you had a murder investigation on your hands. Well, it won't do any harm to let him know how I feel about the situation. I can apologise on behalf of the Met. I'm sure he'd enjoy that. You don't mind. Feel free. I shouldn't have called you. No, you shouldn't. I've got enough tragedy in my life without having you moping around. Who's moping? You. You always mope. I was in the area. Oh, please, Ted. Why oh, and you know me, I'm overarmed. I only called you because the Samaritans were engaged. Maybe it's time you stopped working for Mickey Owen. Is that a marriage proposal? One of these days, he's going to keep punching and kicking and he won't stop. He sent me flowers, which is more than you ever did. We'd every reason to send you flowers. I have an expensive habit. What am I supposed to do? Go on the street and turn tricks? <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. That's beneath you, Ted. You owe him nothing. He pays for my habit. Well, maybe it's time you tried to kick the habit. Mark at the pot call in the kettle beige. I'm in control of the situation. You're not. <laughs> My nostrils can chew your liver any day of the week. With your company. Don't turn round. Use the mirror. Uh, it won't be too pleased to see me. Hold on. Salvation. Did you see that? Wait. Did you get the registration then? Reg, I'm the driver. You're supposed to take down the numbers. Good, they've spotted us. How can that be good? You just ran a red light. I just just let me do the talking. Like you did the driving. <laughs> Great, the dynamic duo. Sir, out the car, please, sir. 
this is becoming a bit of a habit. Sweet. Have I done something wrong? Hello, Reg. South? Not a side's any longer. You sail through a red light. Any chance of forgetting it, just for old time's sake? You want to squeeze? Dropping your standards a bit, Ted. Oi. Do you mind? Roxanne is a friend of mine. It's a bloke. She's a woman. And he gets very offended if he's not treated that way. Excuse me, madam. Would you mind stepping out the car for a moment? That's how a gentleman's supposed to act. That is a lovely suit you're wearing. Thank you. Cost someone nearly 300 quid. Worth it. The sun was in my eyes, Tony. I didn't see it till it was too late. I don't think they've changed the highway code since your day, Ted. And I thought the safest thing to do if you couldn't see was to put the brakes on rather than speed up. Give us a break. I'd like to. You know, Reg, it's a stickler for the rules. How long you known Ted Rowe? Too long. Where were you headed today? My flat. I oh, see. Well, you can join us if you like. You still aware of Hawkey? Yeah, driving license, MOT certificate, insurance documents, they're in the car. Not in a rush, are you? Tony, spending time with you is always a pleasure. Is Mickey in? Mr. Meadows! Now, you, I didn't expect. Why don't you come up? See, it was nice. Where? The lady with Ted Rhodes. You what? I thought she was nice. You mean you fancied her? Well, that's rather a crude way of putting it. Rich. It was a man. <clears throat> well, I actually came here to apologise. What for? Well, uniform got it wrong. See, they were acting on information that hadn't been corroborated. Take a seat. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> am I allowed to know what that information was? Who it came from? I suppose it cost you trade. And trade costs money. A drop in the ocean. I thought you'd have earned enough to retire by now. I am my work, Mr Meadows. We still got that place in Ibiza? Yeah, still there. Well, that's sun, sea and sand, eh? Must be very good for your health. My health has never been better. Well, that's not what I heard. I heard you got a bit of a pain in the neck. Further south than that. But I found a cure. So you're not thinking of retiring then? I like to serve the community. I provide a service that people want at a price they can afford. Very altruistic. Yeah, I, I consider myself to have put the social back into social work. Excuse me. We went and picked her up. We should have got there earlier. Go and sort it. I think you should give your outreach workers some encouragement. I'm sorry, Mr Meadows. I'm afraid we're going to have to cut this meeting short. Now, this isn't just any old single malt. That's the business. Some people, they wouldn't give you the drippings off the nose, not me. The consummate hostess. Is that what Mickey pays you for? This painting's mine. Everything else is his. Is he drunk out of this glass? Glass? It's Waterford Crystal, that is. Has he drunk out of it? Right. Give it here. You weren't brought up. You were dragged, screaming and kicking through the public bar and suckled at the optics. Here. You never touch his tea or coffee unless it's in a china cup and I nicked that myself from Watford Gap service station. And I never thought you'd be so picky. When it comes to booze, I'm very particular. And women? It's been years, Ted. Years. And then it was only because you wanted to borrow the caravan. I was on a job. You used me. I thought the sea air would do you good. Well, I've moved on since then. So I see. I've grown used to this. The view, the lifestyle, the comforts. Then why did you call me? Jacuzzi in the bathroom, waste disposal in the kitchen. Why? Have you seen that widescreen telly? 
I never knew you could get so much pleasure from 36 inches. Because there's a price. So? He hits me every now and again. So what? You deserve better. Plenty of women put up with that sort of thing. Doesn't make it right. My whole life is the centre spread of a Sunday tabloid. Don't sit on my jacket. How long do you think Mickey can hold his luck? What do you mean? He's run protection rackets. He's laundered money. Now he's dealing drugs. It's the sort of behaviour that gets you noticed. Eight years, he's long overdue. He goes down, you go down. Well, isn't that always the way? It's not a joking matter, Roxanne. What do you think is going to happen to you? Do you know something? Underneath this skirt and this wig is a man. Oh, please, don't. No, no, listen to me. Only two people I've ever known have treated me like a woman. One is Mickey Owen. The other one is you. I can't protect you anymore. You do realise that, don't you? I always love the thing you can't have. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? <sighs> Will you reconsider? Think about what I said. I'm sorry, Ted. I can't. Don't touch anything, sir. So what have you got then? More bone fragments. Anything else? It could be something or nothing. It's a fabric sample. Sequins. Mrs. Rhodes? Yes? Hi, uh, I'm DC Lennox from Sunhill. I was wondering if I can ask you a few questions about your husband. Have you found him? Do you mind if we talk inside? They were infants when he left. Cheers. <laughs> that was taken in 1991. Chloe's just been accepted at Bristol University. And Peter's taken his GCSEs. Did your husband give any indication that he was going to leave? No. He had problems. Debt. We had our own house then. Be like the horses and the dogs. It's about on anything. Do you know who he was in debt to? Everybody. So did you receive any threats or letters, phone calls, that sort of thing? How could he just up and leave like that? Look at them. Our kids. Ours. It didn't matter about the debt. We could have sorted it. Why just go off like that? Sometimes I wonder if he's dead. Do you know what the terrible thing is? What's that? I wish it. I wish he was dead. That something had happened. Because it's better than him just running off like that, isn't it? The pain of death I can cope with. Did your husband have any distinguishing features? You found the body, haven't you? Maybe. You think it's him? Possibly. He had a mole on his left cheek. 
a birthmark on the inside of his thigh. What about his feet? Do you know what size they were? Now, what's going on? Yeah. Oh. Give me your keys. What? Your car keys. Where are we going? We're not going anywhere. Well, what do you want to go for? So you can't drive. Come on. Oh. Thanks very much. If we get any more information, we'll get in touch. Yeah? Thank you. Nice to know. Like someone does. No, we don't want double blazing, and no, we're not interested in a conservatory. We live on the fourth floor, for heaven's sake. DS Daily, DC Web, Sunil. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Inside, please. Do you like a drink? Must be some around here somewhere. No, thanks. I don't. Don't. Not anymore. Got you, did it? I've been sober now for about a year. Well, you gotta take each day as it comes. You don't mind if I, uh... Well, if I did, would it make a difference? Oh, <laughs> nothing like the zeal of a reformed drinker. What made you stop? It's a long story. I ain't gone anywhere. Too long. It's only temporary. I move around a lot. So who do you owe money to, Ted? What is this? Oh, come on. Look, I've been there. Bills unpaid. Debts run up. So, uh, I owe a few people. So what? Why are you here, Jim? It isn't out of any concern for my welfare. Did you know Mickey Owens, man? We're looking for you. Black Saloon. Did you frighten them off? Well, they spotted me, so I did my best. <laughs> I knew you weren't all bad. Are you sure you won't... Uh... What happened to me, Jim? I used to be very good. The best. Galloway couldn't handle me. The Burnside. And then I had to go and throw it all away because of Monroe. Cut to the chase. I need your help. All you had to do was ask. We're looking for Sandra Abbott. She smells a little bit. No one here with that name. Well, that's funny. Because she still collects housing benefit for this address and claims relief on her poll tax. Yeah, yeah, okay, we get the point. Is that why you're here? Six years ago, she reported her boyfriend, Steve Bullen, missing. We think we might have found him. What if he doesn't want to be found? What? I said, what if he doesn't want to be found? What if she doesn't want to be found? <sighs> what is this, some sort of hippie mantra? You're Sandra, aren't you? Anything? Well, that's a guess, I'd say. Steve Bullen. I would take my sergeant's exams, but there's a big blot on my copybook. When I was drinking, I became a liability. Oh, here we go, the demon drink again. I was in the frame for a double murder. There was a... A lady I, I knew. I, I woke up 
next to her and she had been strangled. I was there. She'd been murdered and there was nothing I could do. You said it was a double murder. Her old man was found in a bin shoot with his throat cut. Must have been some session. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you think if I give you Owen, they'll give you your chance? I don't know. It might help. Don't you think that if I had any dirt on, on Owen, that I would stick it to him myself? Maybe. Maybe not. Look at that. What is it? It's what I do. Bloke goes into a bar, sees a nice lady, starts chatting to her. All very innocent. Only one or both of them are married and the other half has hired me to get the filthy rotten evidence. So what upsets you the most, Ted? That you're in this line of work or the fact that you used to be the guy in the photographs? Every day I wake up, I feel like a hypocrite. Monroe is the type of guy who should retire and do this job. I've been reduced to this. At least yours was an honest mistake, but this... You've been missing six years. You didn't think to inform anyone? I wanted to go missing. I found God. Yeah, it looks like I see you coming, I know. It was a revelation. Everything I was doing was wrong. Worldly not wisely the love of god i saw the light like saul on the road to damascus and like him i changed my name to paul you're lovely we thought there was a foot that had your name on it the way things were for me i had no choice really i was in with a very bad crowd yeah we know we've seen your farms I don't want my past to catch up with me. And perhaps Sandra should stop claiming Dole in a given name. If we found you this easily, so will they. Who's they? Whoever it is you don't want to find you. The devil's disciples. Yeah. Them and your old bank will be mates. If you just let God into your life, you could let go of that anger. We'll show ourselves out. And now you're saying you won't help me. I'm saying I can't. I thought we were mates. Well, funnily enough, I thought the same thing yesterday until you had me arrested for drink and driving. <laughs> but you wouldn't have cooperated unless you had to. I didn't have to cooperate at all. Your little plan didn't work. So what happens the next time that Owen puts Roxanne into hospital? What are you going to do then? You know where the door is. Fine. I had high hopes for you, Jim. But I guess we both got old and fat and disappointed. Hiya. Yeah? I'm looking for a Paul Murphy. Who wants him? I'm DC Lennox from Sun Hill. Yes, and? It's about a friend of his that went missing some seven years ago, a Philip Macy. You better come in. Thanks. Nice place you've got here. It's not mine. I look after it on a permanent basis for a friend. Philip Macy was living with you at the time of his disappearance, is that right? Shared a flat over shopping at Cost Street. You've come up in the world since then, haven't you? Me? I'm a star.
thought Philippa disappeared back up north, gone to her sister's. It was his sister who reported them missing. No wonder for Shirley Bassett. Oh, did he? Yeah. He managed to squeeze into one of her frocks. There was this showbiz auction and they had this number she'd worn in Vegas, gold sequins. He'd have given your right arm to squeeze into it and Philip did and then he's got these whopping great big feet on the bottom. Big feet? Why the sudden interest? How close were you to Philip? What have you found? We found a foot. A foot? A severed foot. Jim? All right, do your worst. Or whatever you do, don't kiss me. DCR Meadows. No, no, I'll take the call. What about my sister? That's been dealt with. Do you really think it's him? Let's hope not, eh? Excuse me. Duncan, yeah. Look, I've got some information that might help you narrow things down a bit. Yeah, forensics have found traces of nail varnish on the severed foot. So it looks like our man liked to paint his toes. Yeah, well, that narrows it down considerably, Goff. They've also found a fabric sample. Sequence. They weren't gold, were they? How did you know? Let me get back to you, Goff. I'm sorry. Oh. If Nicky Owen has any idea how much Roxanne has told me, he'll kill her. Nothing changes very much, does it, Tan? Well, at least I don't have to take your sanctimonious bull anymore. I think there was a misunderstanding somewhere along the line. Really? Yeah, Raymond's got loads of meat between his thighs, but not a lot between his ears, you know what I mean? An irresistible force met an immovable object. Nicky's bones. And that was before they were looking for you.